So this video is on volume. I know this isn't the volume that you turn your TV up on or anything. This is volumes of 3D shapes. So the formula for a volume of a prism is val v equals a times l. Now we need to really like work out what these things stands for. So v in val is the volume. The A in VAL is cross-sectional area, so area, but it's the cross-sectional area, which we'll get to. And L is the length. So this formula works for things like cubes, cuboids, so stretched out cubes, cylinders, and triangular prisms. So we'll take a look at that now. So first we're going to look at a cube. And I have my Rubik's Cube. It's in the name. Not completed yet, it's only taken me a couple of years to get to this stage. So we're going to work out the volume of this object here, the cube, my Rubik's cube, using this formula here. So first of all, we know that V equals AL, so we need cross-sectional area and length. So first of all, what is cross-sectional area? So the cross-sectional area of this Rubik's cube is this face here, just the area of the face. And then the length is going to be this bit here. So the way I think of this making sense is I think of having this square here, the cross-sectional area, and then having loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of them, so the length of them, to make the whole shape. So say I've got one and then I have multiply them up by many. So first of all we need to take some measurements. So to work out the cross-sectional area I need this multiplied by this length. So let's measure that. So that is 5.5 .5, and then this should be the same because it should be a square and this is 5.5. .5. So the cross-sectional area, the area of this face here is 5.5 .5 multiplied by 5.5. .5. Now we need to multiply it by the length, so this part here, and if we measure that, again because it's a cube, this should be 5.5, .5. yep, so we multiply it by 5.5. .5. So volume is the cross-sectional area, 5.5 .5, this, multiplied by this, 5.5 .5. and then we scale it by going multiplied by that length 5.5 .5, which gives me an answer of 166.375 and then this centimeters but the unit this time for volume is cubed and you might want to round that answer so let's do another shape so now I have this black beans in water Tesco mild and soft Half cans, one in five a day apparently. And this is a cylinder. So we're going to work out the volume of this exact cylinder. So first of all, we know that the formula is val, V equals A times L. And the cross-sectional area in this case is this circular face here. And then the length is multiplied by this. So we need to take some measurements. So the area of this circular face is the area of a circle which is pi r squared times l, but I'm going to now call this the height, times h. So we need to take the measurement of radius and height. So let's do that. So r is h is. So the radius is about 4. It's about 10.5, and then these are centimetres. So let's just put that into our formula and calculate. So volume is pi times r squared, which is 4 for this cylinder, times the height, which is 10.5. And the answer is 168 pi, and that is 5, 2, 7 point, we'll go 7, round 9, and then that's centimetres, and again, cubed, because we're talking about volume. So we've actually worked out the volume pretty much exactly. For this cylinder here, this can of beans, and to be honest it looks the same size as most baked beans and other stuff like that, so very useful. Okay, so this next example, this shape is, if we remember this, by, it has a triangle, so we know it's try something, and then this rectangle base, kind of like angular, so this is your triangular prism. Now let's work out the volume of this. We know the formula is V equals AL, val. 
So first, the cross-sectional area of this shape is this part here, this face here, the triangle. So first of all, let's put that part in. So what is the area of a triangle? It's half times the base, which is 3 metres, times the height, which is 5. Remember, if they give you this length of this slope, that's not actually the height. So height is 5, and then multiplied by the length, so we've got that triangle multiple times times 10. And the answer to that is... 75 and then this time we're talking meters and again we're talking volume so we're going cubed and the reason the units work like that is because you've got meters multiplied by meters multiplied by meters you have meters multiplied by meters multiplied by meters which they all have a one there and when you multiply you add the powers so you get what m um, one plus one plus one equals m to the three so now we're going to move on to look at some more funky shapes that aren't just val and the first one we're going to look at is a sphere, and yes, this apple is not really a sphere, but it's the only round piece of fruit I have in my house, which I was very disappointed at at the moment. Volume of a sphere is this formula here. It's 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So I'm just going to leave that there. So yeah, all you really need to know is the radius and you can work out the whole volume of a sphere, it's quite clever really. What about a cone? Unfortunately I don't actually have a cone. The volume of a cone is a third multiplied by pi r squared h. The way I remember this is this part of the equation is actually the volume of a cylinder so if we bring back our cat can of black beans in, in water, we knew that the cross-sectional area here was pi r squared, the area of a circle, and then we multiplied it by the height. So that was actually the volume of a cylinder, our black beans. So the way you work out the volume of a cone is you just add a third. And you can kind of think of that as if you've got um as if you had a cylinder and then you've kind of like taken a bit out and you've got a third left. So that's just one way you might want to try and remember it. And lastly we have the volume of a pyramid, so like you see in Egypt, and that is a third times A times, what have I just done? I've said A and written H, weirdo, times H. So A is this cross-sectional area at the bottom here, and then H is the height of the pyramid. So it's got a third again, similarly like cone, and then you've got a h. So the way you can think of this one is if we bring back our cube, so it has a square base, but instead of having the full area, you've kind of got triangle bit of it, so the third like the third there. Another funky shape you could have is a frustum, which I've been having a lot of difficulty saying, because I've never come across this word before, of a cone, and that is if you get, get a cone, and then you chop a bit off, parallel, so you've got to just go straight across. So you chop a bit of the cone off, and you're left with this sort of shape here. And that is a frost, a frost stem of a cone. So a cone minus a cone. So we have this whole cone, take away this whole cone. And the equation for that, the volume... Uh, so the equation for that is the volume of the original cone, so the volume of this, what was here, this full cone, and then you subtract the volume of the removed cone, the volume of that cone. And we're going to look at an example of a fast <laughs> oh my god, I need to stop saying that, question um, in a bit, so we're just going to run through some vol exam volume questions now. Okay, so it's, trying, it's asking you to calculate the volume of this weird shape here. So the way we're going to do this is like working the area of compound shapes up, is if you split it up and work out the volume of this, separately to the volume of that, and add them up. So I like to draw a little sketch of what I'm finding first, just so I 
don't forget to add them up and I know what's going on. So first I'm going to find the volume of this shape here. So the formula for volume is val of this prism V equals A times L and the cross sectional area is going to be this bit here. So that is the base times height of this square, so we have 4 is that length and this length, so it's going back and then that should be 10 centimetres from there. So it doesn't really look like 10 because it's going away from you and I've drawn it. So, but yeah, that, all of these are going back the same amount. And then we've got to multiply, so that's our area bit. And then the length or the height here is 7 centimetres. So if we work that out, we get 280 centimetres cubed. Okay, let's move on to the other part. We have parts, let's work out the volume of that. Again, same thing, we have V equals A times L, so we're going to take, that is A, cross-sectional area, and then we're going to times it by the length. So what is that? So this length here is going to be this 9, this 4 bit 9, take away this 4. So you've got the whole length of this is 9, subtract this bit. So that is 5. So this is 5 centimetres. So you've got 5 centimetres times its bit here, times 2, and then times by the length. So that is 10 times 10, which is 100 centimetres cubed. So now the volume of the whole shape is 280 plus 100, so it's 380 centimetres cubed. So that shows you an example of breaking it up. Okay, so now we want the volume of this shape, so this one down here, the frustum, and we know that that was the, area, the, the volume of the original cone, so original cone, I'm going to call it OC, subtract the cone you've removed, subtract R cone, so removed cone. So let's work out those bits separately. Okay, for the original cone, first of all we need to remember the formula for a cone, for the volume of a cone, and that was a third times, and then it was the volume of a cylinder, pi r squared times h. So we need the radius and we need the height. So the radius of our original cone is, this is 30, but that's the diameter. If we want half of 30, so it's 15, and then that bit is squared, and then the height of our original cone, the whole thing, is 40 and that gives us an answer of 3000 pi and then that's centimeters cubed so now let's move on to the removed cone so this has the same formula we have a third and then the volume of a cylinder but this time we're going to have different r's and different h so this is the removed cone so i'm going to draw the removed cone down here a slightly smaller one so we know that the height is 20 but we want to find the radius. And this is where we use the idea of similar shapes. So we've got a big cone and then we've chopped it off and got a little cone. So they're similar shapes. So this radius here, so this one was actually 15 because that's given us the diameter, is related to the radius here, but how is it scaled down? So if we look at the height, the height has gone from 40 in the big original cone to 20 in the smaller cone. Therefore, we can see that the height is halved, and because these are similar cones, which so is kind of shrunk or enlarged, whichever way you want to look at it, that means you half the other values. So the radius is going to be half of 15, which is 7.5. So I hope that makes sense. So you've got a similar cone, basically. So this height has gone down by a half. The height is halved, so the radius is halved. All the values, half. So we have a third times pi times our new radius squared, which is 7.5 squared times the h, which this time is 20. That gives you an answer of 375 pi. So now if we want the thrust time, oh stupid word, we take the original cone, so 3000 pi, subtract the removed cone, this whole cone, subtract this cone, and we're left with this area. And that gives us... 2, 6, 2, 5 pi, 
which is 8,246 point, we'll go, this is rounded 6, 8, and then we've got centimetres, and then don't forget the cubed. So we're going to do one more volume example. So we're now going to look at the volume of a hemisphere, and the hemisphere, like if you think of Earth and the two hemispheres, we, we have north and south, is a sphere split into two. So I'm going to cut my sphere, or my Menaby sphere, into two. And now I'm going to work out, pretend that's exact, the volume of this hemisphere. So firstly, I'm going to need the equation. So the volume of a hemisphere is half the volume of a sphere. So a half, and then the volume of a sphere was 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So the only piece of information I actually need to input and need to know is the radius. So let's measure that. So the radius of my apple is 3 centimetres. So the radius was 3 centimetres, so I'm going to input that into my equation and find the answer. The answer I get is 18 pi, or that could be centimetres cubed, but rounded with numbers, that's 56.55 centimetres cubed.